bro, you know how weak you must be to not be able to open a pickle jar, but a ghost can? That sucks. Same though, don't worry. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Sharon. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. It is officially spooky season and maybe you're watching this video in the future and it's not even spooky season, but like that's okay because spooky season is a lifestyle. <laughs> During the month of October, I like to make, spoiler alert, spooky videos. One of those videos includes me asking my subscribers for the real life ghost stories and or supernatural experiences. Cue Sam and Dean. So that's what we're doing today. If you believe in ghosts, give us a big thumbs up. And if you don't believe in ghosts, give us a big thumbs up. <laughs> and of course, subscribe and turn on your post notifications and go binge some more spooky videos if you want to get in the spooky mood. Now go grab your snacks, your tea, and let's get right into these ghost stories. We once tried playing with an Ouija board and contact my late brother who died at three by falling into the well. So me and my other two siblings played it together. It said, Granny, come. We were horrified and tore the Ouija board and threw it in the trash. Next day, it was in my eldest sister's period cabinet without a scratch. Every time we threw it, it kept coming back in her period cabinet. A month later, my grandma died near the well because a log of wood fell down. After two days of her death, we tried throwing the Ouija board again, and this time it didn't come back. That's suspicious. That's weird. The only two things that I'm like, wait, what? Is the fact that it's like a three-year-old, can children speak that much at three years old? I don't know, I don't have any kids. Um, And then the other thing is, why the period cabinet? Why would the Ouija board choose to return to a period cabinet and be surrounded by pads and tampons? Is it because it's like close to blood or something? I don't know. See, my thing is I would never, ever, ever touch an Ouija board. Do I think demons are real? I don't know. I don't want to find out. So I'm not going to touch an Ouija board because I have heard so many horror stories of like tossing an Ouija board and it coming back inside the house. Whether or not it's actually doing it or that's someone in your life messing with you, again, I don't want to find out. The fact that this was happening and then grandma, yeah, that's a little bit weird and scary. Okay, so I come from a long line of Scottish women accused of witchcraft and we see ghosts all the time, but I'll give you one of the creepiest encounters I've had. So for some stupid reason, I decided to go through a haunted train tunnel. There was supposedly a cemetery on top and according to urban legend, someone was hung by a hook right in the middle of the tunnel. So me and my friends were going through it and I felt wind on the back of my neck. I turned around and there was nothing there. It continued like that for a minute and then I just looked up at the ceiling and there was a man's face inches away from mine and we just stared at one another until he eventually just faded away. And if any of you are interested, it's called the Tunnelton Tunnel. Hold up, I'm literally about to Google this right now. Tunnelton Tunnel. Yeah, wow, it's a real life tunnel. It's in Indiana. It was built in the mid 1800s and is believed to be haunted. There are different stories. Uh, first one is an apparition of a man with a decapitated head is believed to exist here. Okay, that's nice. Uh, the ghostly man is said to wander with a lantern in one head as since there was like a graveyard on top of the tunnel, people think that when construction was happening, bodies fell through to the tunnel. Creepy, okay. Another local legend says a family was killed long ago when their horse and buggy crashed into the river down the hill and then a third story is the murder of Henry Dixon, whose body was supposedly brought to the tunnel to be destroyed when a train kept plowing through. Locals believe his spirit lingers in the tunnel. That's creepy. That's a lot of creepy activity going on for one tunnel, and um, I'm good. If you're going through a tunnel that's supposed to be haunted, and you see a man's face literally fade in your eyes, yeah, I think it's safe to say it's haunted, and I would simply bolt out of there and never go back. <laughs> for people that don't believe in, like, ghosts or that things are haunted, then, like, how do you explain these creepy shared experiences? experiences that are unexplainable. Hmm. At camp a few years ago, I snuck out and went up to the mountains just to chill and be by myself for a bit. Out of nowhere, I got this strange feeling and I felt like I was being watched. It was very dark. My only source of light was a flashlight and the feeling got so overwhelming. I decided to go back to the cabins. On my way back, I saw a figure. I have no idea whether it was a ghost, a demon, humanoid, etc., but its presence was very strong and it was terrifying. So I'm never going alone into the mountains again. I'm glad you recognized your first mistake, which was going alone into the mountains when it's dark out. First of all, that's literally how people get lost. The amount of people that are missing in mountain ranges is enough for me to never wander deep into a mountain, especially by myself. Aside from that, it was obviously Bigfoot. Like, changed my mind. <laughs> Bigfoot caught your ass, pondering about life alone in the middle of the darkness, and Bigfoot was like, mmm, should I show myself? <laughs> yeah, I'm already like a little bit scared of the woods. I saw the Blair Witch Project, I'm good. <laughs> when I was about three, keep in mind, I could not read yet. Me and my parents went to Salem, Massachusetts. We were at some field that had a couple of gravestones when my parents were planning the rest of the day. I was sitting in front of one of the gravestones. I ran over to my parents asking if I could play with Tommy and Abigail and my parents assumed it was imaginary friends but when it was time to leave my dad walked over the gravestone and it said the names Thomas and Abigail. So basically I was playing with little ghost children. It's stories about this that make me 
reconsider having children. <laughs> the amount of stories you read or you hear that it's always like children being connected to the supernatural because they're the youngest, like they have the least life, they're closest to that spooky world. I'm just like, I'm good. Let my kids start talking to ghosts, bro. I'm out, no offense to my kid. Imagine your three-year-old playing with ghost children and your three-year-old can't even read. So you're like, oh shit, my child really is talking to ghost children. Oh man, I forgot my kid in Salem. That's crazy. <laughs> Gotta get a whole nother kid that isn't talking to ghosts now. <laughs> Recently, I was going down a back road with my mom and her boyfriend just exploring and we came across an abandoned house. We decided to try to get in and we were able to get up the steps. When we got up the steps, the door creaked open. The weird thing is when I tried to move this door, it was extremely heavy. I had to use most of my body weight to even get it to budge a little and there was no wind at all that day. When I went inside, my mom's boyfriend and I heard something shuffling around in there. Like the sound of footsteps going through trash because the place was full of trash. We knew we were alone. From where we were standing, we could see the whole first floor and the stairs up to the upstairs part were completely rotted. No living being would be able to get up there. I had a spirit box with me and her name showed up, Charles. Later, I was researching the property and I found a record for it. Looking at the owner's name, I was shocked. The owner's name was Charles. Again, I ask, when stuff like this happens that you can't explain it, how do you not believe in ghosts or spooky stuff like that? Listen, I'm a very like scientific person. I'm like, I need to see it to believe it. So have I seen a ghost? No, but I hear enough things about ghosts like this that I'm like, hmm, maybe. Cause what are the odds of going into a house? You've never been in that house. You just happen to have a supernatural spooky ghost box thing. And it picks up the name Charles. And then you find out the guy that owned the house was named Charles. Explain that. How? Unless someone was able to like rig the air in the house to make the air whisper Charles to your little spooky box. I don't know, but it's creepy. My great grandma died in August of 2020 and her slash her house had a very distinct smell. She was a traditional lady who disliked multiple piercings slash tattoos. One night me and my mom were lying on my bed and discussing our next piercings. I wanted my seconds doing and my mom wanted her belly button doing. Suddenly my entire room smelt of her as if a warning from her since we know how she felt about piercings. Even though I would imagine she was annoyed by the conversation, it was incredibly comforting to know she was still there. That's really sweet. Like it's like heartbreaking, but it's like really sweet at the same time. How do you explain something like this? Great Graham's perfume suddenly just like spilled in your room for no reason. And that's why it smells like her. Like that's crazy. But I can imagine how comforting this is. But then I'm also like, are my like diseased family members always watching me? Even when I'm like doing private things? I can't think too much about it or I will have a crisis. <laughs> I was laying on the couch in my living room. It was about 1 a.m. I was just starting to fall asleep when all of a sudden I hear what seems to be a dog in its cage wanting to be let out. And it was coming from the kitchen, which is where my dog's cage is. I was really confused considering my dog was laying right next to me already asleep. That's nice. Demon dog. Love that. Oh my God. Is it the hellhounds? I've been watching a lot of supernatural lately. So it's a hundred never percent the hellhounds. <laughs> you ever hear stuff though? And you're like, I know I heard it, but it's impossible that I heard it. Cause where did it come from? And then you're just like gaslighting yourself and you're like second down. You're like, am I crazy? Well, like seriously, how do you explain that stuff? I heard a dog crying. My dog's asleep. So who let the dogs in? Not even out. I got a random dog in my kitchen now. Like it's just, it's creepy. We have these ghosts in our house. We have had multiple warnings from different spirits in the house saying there is a bad man. He apparently is a spirit too. So this one night my boyfriend and I were laying in bed and all of a sudden he starts freaking out saying there was something on the ceiling. It almost looked like a black hole except it was moving and making noises. Scariest night ever. We also constantly wake up with scratches. Nah, that's when I get myself a tent and I sleep outside. Okay, ghosty, you can keep this house. It's your house now. Dude, first of all, to have multiple ghosts in your house and then be like, yo, there's a really bad ghost here and you're waking up with scratches? Sell that thing. Oh my God, no, I'm good. This one time, I will never forget this. It was like my 16th birthday party. My friends and I had a sleepover at a hotel after my birthday party and we we're just talking about like ghosts and demons and stuff like that. And I woke up the next morning and I had scratches on my elbow. I was traumatized. It wasn't like it was an old hotel or anything. I don't know my friends did that to me in my sleep, but I was just like, you know, that's enough for me to never step foot in this hotel. So I can't imagine having to live with that every single day. Keep the house. It's all yours. It probably was yours before me. So you know what? Have fun haunting it. I was pretty young at the time, two, three-ish. And I went to a cemetery with my mom and grandma to visit my grandfather's grave. I remember being sat right next to his grave doing his makeup with this little plastic makeup set. And I put blue lipstick on him. On the way home, my mom and my grandma said I was talking and laughing to someone, but no one was sitting next to me. We think it was my grandfather. And funny enough, he died exactly six months before I was born. 
porn. Remember when I said that like children creep me out because of stuff like this? Yeah, consider myself creeped out. Even though it's sweet in this case, it's still mad creepy that children are like talking to ghosts. Like what blew my mind and what I have just never been able to forget no matter how hard I try is if you had an imaginary friend as a child, were they really an imaginary friend or was it a ghost? Yeah, think about that and have a bit of a crisis yourself. Hmm. One night I had my eyes closed trying to fall asleep and I felt something pulling on my knee. I thought it was just my brain playing games with me until I felt something pushing on my eyelids. I opened my eyes to reposition and I saw a white figure with black eyes floating above my head. Then when I turned off the lights, it disappeared. How is someone supposed to fall asleep after that? How am I supposed to stay in my room and try to get a good night's rest after experiencing something like that? The way I would be screaming outside of that the house and screaming and running until I can't anymore. Uh, no, dude. But also, you know, like sometimes when like you press your eyelids so much and you start seeing like, I don't know, like white dots and stuff like that. Maybe like you were like half asleep and you woke up and then like you just kind of, I don't know, dude, I'm trying to justify seeing a white figure with scary black eyes that just disappeared. I don't know. I, you know, like the only solution really is move out. It's their house now. <laughs> I used to go to my mom's aunt's house a lot and always used to talk to this guy in her basement. And then we didn't go to her house for a few years. During winter, house and I asked if that guy was there. They're like, what guy? I described him. No one had a clue who he was and no one knows anything about this guy. Yo, what? Talk about literally stranger danger. You're telling me there was just a random guy in auntie's basement? <laughs> That's my favorite part about this story. It doesn't say like there was a ghost. It's random guy. Like what if someone had broken into her home and was literally living in her home this entire time and she had no idea? Why did this guy never leave the basement? Because his soul slash ghost was stuck to her or because he dead ass broke into this woman's house and was living in <laughs> <laughs> is he gone because his soul was released up or down? Or is he gone because he moved into a different house? Who knows? The way I would have to tear apart my basement to try and figure out what the heck this kid was talking about. When I was around 10 or 11, I slept with my door open every night for whatever reason. One night, I was woken by the sound of footsteps and I sat up to look out my bedroom door from where I was sleeping. That's when I saw a white ghost-like thing run past the hallway, making a noise loud enough that my parents had to come out of the room to ask what the sound was. We all thought it was my younger brother, but it turns out he hadn't been up at all that night and we had the cameras to prove it. I sleep with my door closed now. Yeah, same. I have never felt comfortable sleeping with my bedroom door open or my closet door open. And I don't know if that's just like a thing I kept from childhood where it's just like, oh, monsters in the closet type of thing, but I always sleep with the doors closed. And if it's a bedroom door, I always lock it. I don't know, man. Maybe if like someone's like breaking into my house, like a burglar, like maybe this was a burglar dressed as a ghost. Like what better way to rob someone's house than being dressed as a ghost to creep them out? right? Did I just give these people an idea? Forget anything I just said. Anyway, so maybe me locking the door would distract them, right? It would like put them off for a little bit because if it was a ghost, they could just walk right through the door. Oh my god. If it is a ghost, they could just walk through your door. Move out. Also, if they weren't caught on the cameras, oh my god, you need a new house. It's his house now. When my sisters were younger, they had an Anna and Elsa dolls that were about the size of them. My sisters had put their dolls in the garage in the night and the next morning they appeared back in the closet? What? Talk about not being able to let it go. <laughs> it's already horrible to be like haunted by a ghost. You imagine being haunted by Anna and Elsa dolls? That is a nightmare, dude. It's so crazy because when you picture like haunted dolls, you always think of like old dolls, right? Like 1900s type of like made from porcelain, ceramic, maybe even wood. I wouldn't picture like an Anna and Elsa doll from like 2012. <laughs> But hey, if it's a doll, it's a doll. And if I can possess it, I'm gonna possess it, right? <laughs> yeah, no. Would not be able to let this one go at all. I was cleaning my room when I heard someone call my name and my mom was the only other person home. I turned to see my door, which I left open, and I see a girl in a white dress at my door staring at me. I never cleaned my room with the door open after that day. But remember when I was like, I watched too much Supernatural. Yeah, those lady in whites, those like girl in whites. Mmm, that's never a good sign. Y'all heard of that, Yorona? I'm good. Let me be a child, seeing a lady in white, thinking she wants to eat me no i'm good or drown me i guess whatever i would still be freaked out regardless if there's someone at my house and i do not know who that person is and i'm the only person that saw that person what solution do you have to being a kid that's seen ghosts grow up like okay yeah just give me a couple of years just always remember though if it's a ghost they can still walk through doors so maybe put a little salt yeah salt on the windows and the doors wonder where i got that from actually no wait for real if i thought i lived in a house with a ghost i would deadass just put salt 
around like my bed, probably the toilet seat, probably my desk, the door, the windows, the shower. Oh my God, yeah, this is not about to get psycho up in here. I was home alone eating lunch when I noticed the bathroom light was on. I went to turn it off and it went out before I reached the switch. I tried to leave, but the door was locked. And then I saw a crying, bleeding, burnt looking man talking to me in the mirror saying, let me see my little Abby one more time. Turns out my house was built next to a building that 11 firefighters died from an explosion, one of them having a little girl named Abigail. Sir, do I look like I know an Abby or anything about her? Uh-uh, I literally got goosebumps from that story. Dude, that is terrifying. How do you explain this? Like, if this generally happened, like, are, are you just that so far out of your mind, for example? Like, would that be the explanation? But then there's a story that checks out. Because, no, this actually happened. Sir, I do not know Abby. I was just trying to pee. I'm sorry. You know, I, like, never believed in Bloody Mary. But I've always been too scared or superstitious to actually look in a mirror and say Bloody Mary three times. So take that as you will. This, maybe it did happen, maybe it didn't. I don't want to find out. It do sound a little bit spooky. And this last one says, okay, so like, this isn't that creepy. But one time I was at my grandma's house where my grandpa died at and I couldn't get a pickle jar open. So I went to go get something. And when I came back, it was open. Honestly, yeah, that's not really creepy. That's actually super nice and like convenient and handy. If I were to have a ghost, I would only hope that it was a ghost that would do stuff like this. Like just help me out around the house. Like where's my favorite pair of shoes that I can't find? And then like all of a sudden, and they just appear in my room the next day. That would be awesome. I can't open the pickle jar. Ghosty got you. Just open the pickle jar. Bro, you know how weak you must be to not be able to open a pickle jar, but a ghost can? That sucks. Same though. Don't worry. <laughs> Maybe I would be one of those ghosts that like pulls little pranks, like just moves stuff. Me gaslighting the homeowner into thinking they're losing their mind and misplacing stuff. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a big thumbs up. If you have any ghost stories or supernatural experiences that I did not get to read today, but you'd like to share with us, please do so in the comments below. I want you to tell me which one of these you think was the creepiest and try and top it. Also, I wanna know, do you believe in ghosties? I feel like I have to, cause like a lot of this is so unexplainable. Like seriously, riddle me this. How did this all happen? I bet it got explained. If you wanna watch more spooky videos, I should have an entire playlist on my channel. If not, I'll make one. I got a lot of spooky videos on my channel, so those will be fun to binge. Now, shout out of the day goes to Katie on Instagram. Thank you so, so much. If you'd like to be shout out of the day, just follow me on my Instagram and stay active. That's where I post bonus content, and I also post bonus content on TikTok, so hit your girl up on there, too. All that being said, I hope you guys stay safe out there. I hope you don't get possessed. I hope you're not talking to too many ghosts, at least, like, scary, spooky ones that could, like, you know, like, possess you and, like, you. Um, and yeah, I love you. Happy spooky season. Bye.